If you want an effective way to measure your current and future workload, then you're in the right place. Here at Everyday Design, I'm gonna talk through how do you use the Fibonacci sequence with story points to help you better estimate the workload for you and your team. Do you want a concrete way to measure workload? Maybe you've tried relative estimation, but you keep slipping back into absolute sizing like hours. Well, having led teams over the years, I know how important it is to clearly and accurately measure how much work specific tasks or projects or user stories are going to require. And I've trained teams to use story points to estimate their work and get their workload under control. But the Fibonacci sequence, that's what we're going to talk about today, uh, it's great because it provides a numeric but relative measurement for your work. Let's see how we can kind of use that. Well, if you're not familiar, the Fibonacci sequence is just the, the sequence of numbers that you get when you start with one and two, and then every other number is the sum of the previous two. So the sequence looks something like one, and then two, three, five, eight, 13, 21, okay, and so on. Okay, that's a great math review, um, but how does it help you estimate workload? Well, um, that's because the relationship between one number being the sum of the two previous numbers, it gives separation, gives enough, but not too much separation between sizes. And we'll see in a minute why this is important when it comes to making estimation easier. But to get started on your team, you're going to first um, gather up some past tasks, or user story that you've completed, completed, and you're gonna group them by how much effort they took. And so you're, you're gathering those user stories and putting them in a group of about the same size together. And then now you're gonna take those groups and you're gonna arrange them in order from smallest to largest, um, and, try and, and, try and you might have to adjust it a little bit so that tasks in one group are basically about the same size as a task from each of the two smaller groups combined. So now that you have these groups set up, you're going to say the, the ones in the smallest group, those are worth three story points. And the ones in the next small next larger group are worth five and then worth eight. And so now that you have these groups arranged, if you have a new task, you go, okay, is it more like the user stories in the one in the eight story point group or in the five story point group? So you see how that question is a lot faster than how many hours will that new user story take? You're measuring new work relative to old work, and that's the basics of relative sizing. Now, there's other methods you can use like t-shirt sizing um, to represent how much effort a user story will take, but I like Fib the Fibonacci sequence because it is numeric, and since it's numeric, you can use it in calculations, uh, because remember, each of these groups of user stories has a set value, like three or five or eight, and so if you at take those sizes and you um, look at, like, say, all the things, all the um, user stories, that a team is tackling in a sprint, you see how much work that's gonna take. If you look at the same thing for their backlog, you can see how much work is ahead of you. You can even see how far down a specific feature is, and you can forecast how long it'll take to get there by averaging how many story points you're completing over time. But one pitfall to it being numeric is that teams start to relate those numbers back to hours again. They slide back into thinking this way, um, and you lose all the benefits of relative estimation. So an easy way to fix this problem is to use a part of the Fibonacci sequence that's not close to how many hours it'll take, because maybe the ones in your, your eight story points take about eight hours. Well, then people are gonna start thinking in hours again. So instead of you know, three, five, eight, 13, maybe you have 89, 144, 233, 610, oh well, wait, I lost, anyway. Um, you get too many digits, you start getting just typos though. So you want to, you don't have to do that. You And you don't even have to use numbers from the original uh, Fibonacci sequence. You could say, let's say you want to just start with 27 and 45. Well, then that give you a sequence of 27, 45, 72, 117, 189. There's flexibility there. You can use kind of whatever works best for you. Once your teams get the hang of it, estimating is quick. And forecasting is even quicker. There's no longer these, these long drawn out debates about how many hours something's gonna take. You can be confident in how much work a user story is gonna require. And these numbers, they can be really helpful in calculating and forecasting the future. And that makes you know your managers happy, which makes all of us happy. 
So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, video on using the Fibonacci sequence to estimate how many story points your user stories are going to take. I've included other resources for both user stories and story points down in the descriptions, videos and posts. If you have any questions, drop those in the comments. We'd love to talk to you there. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you can get more helpful videos like this one. Thanks and see you next time.